Okay, let's talk about the Virginia SOL Algebra 1 test. And if you're watching this video, I assume you are a high school student in Virginia and you're preparing for this uh, particular exam. And uh, SOL, if you don't know what it stands for, it stands for Standards of Learning. So it's a uh, very important exam. Um, of course, Algebra 1 is not the only topic that you have to take SOL exams in. So uh, hopefully um, you're already familiar with uh, SOL exam. And uh, as you proceed through high school in Virginia, you're going to be taking uh, many of these exams, and they're very important. So it's a good thing that you're watching this video because it's obviously showing that you are taking uh, this exam seriously. So uh, what we're going to do here is just take a look at a practice problem that should be able to handle pretty easily if you expect to do well, you know, if you're prepared for this uh, um, Algebra 1 exam. But before we get going, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and I've been teaching many, many years and I've actually over uh, several years developed a lot of online courses. And I actually offer a Virginia SOL Algebra 1 test prep course I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. Extremely comprehensive, but again, you can check that out um, after we go through this problem. So let's get right to it. And this is just a basic equation, basic Algebra 1 equation. This is something um, definitely that you should be able to hopefully do without too many issues. Uh, so my suggestion is you pause the video, go ahead and try to solve uh, this equation. Okay, that's what this is. Obviously, I'm going to solve it, uh, then we'll move on and wrap up this uh, little pop quiz, if you will. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you um, have your answer. Now, one thing here is, uh, remember, uh, when you're doing any work in mathematics, you want to show your all your steps. You want to write them out, okay? Probably one of the top things you can do to immediately improve your accuracy uh, or your grades or your performance in math is, let me just do this real quick, a couple quick things, okay? One, your notes. Uh, you should be having, you know, uh, real a real focus on your note-taking, okay? I can almost always tell by someone's notes how well they're focusing and learning uh, in class. So take a look at your notes and be honest with yourself. Can they be improved? Are you taking any, <laughs> are you, do you have any notes? You know, if you do have any, uh, if you do have notes, are they, you know, are they good? Can you read them? Would you share them with someone else? So that's, that's one thing. The other thing is your neatness. Okay. How neat are you? Okay. In other words, are you sloppy? I know when I was in high school, I was just terrible, chicken scratch. It was it was pretty bad, <laughs> but you know I was forced um, through years of education to you know improve my neatness. I really had to work at it, but you can do that as well. So if you're naturally sloppy like I was, you know you're going to have to make a a uh, an effort on becoming neater. Okay, so taking notes, becoming neater, and then show your work okay so show your steps and just kind of model after what you're learning whatever your teacher is writing etc okay so those things are going to help you out all right so let's get right to it let me go ahead and solve this i don't want to turn this into a full lesson on how to solve equations because it's a huge topic in algebra but let's go ahead and just solve this equation now okay so first things first here if you see these parentheses like so and something a summer difference inside um, uh, parentheses, uh, what we call grouping symbols in math, uh, this is indicating that you have to do the distributive property. Okay? And that's one of the first steps you have to do when you have a distributive property situation in an equation. You have to go ahead and do that first so you can kind of uh, proceed by combining like terms. We can't do anything until we have to, um, you know, well, we're kind of stuck if we don't do the distributive property. So that's like one of the first steps. So let's go ahead and do that now. So you want to distribute this negative 2 to these terms in here. Okay, so negative 2 times negative 4x will be 8x, positive 8x, right? Negative times negative is positive. Then negative 2 times a negative 1 will be a positive 2. Okay, so if you made a little error here with your, your signs, you know, this was negative or this became negative for some reason, you got to be very careful. Okay, now here, this negative 4x minus 1, 
You could also think of this negative 4x minus 1 as negative 4x plus a negative 1. So if that helps you kind of see what the sign is of this particular number, then, you know, you can, you know, uh, certainly think of it in, in that way. Okay, that's a good kind of uh, tips to, uh, I, well, good suggestion that I, that I um, kind of emphasize with my students so they don't make a mistake here. Okay, let's move on. So on the right-hand side of the equation, we have a negative of negative 1, or the opposite of a negative 1, which, of course, is a positive 1. Then we have plus x. Okay, so now what do we do at this uh, stage of the game? Well, remember when you're solving linear equations, you want to get all your variables on the left-hand side and all the numbers on the right-hand side. So this is where we're going to have to go ahead and start subtracting things from both sides or adding things from both sides of the equation. So let's go ahead and, and uh, move our variables over. So I have an x on the right-hand side, and really this is a 1x, a positive 1x. So I'm going to subtract a negative 1x from both sides of the equation. Okay, and remember, in algebra, uh, one of the main uh, ideas is whatever you do on one side of the equation, you can do whatever you want as long as you do it equally to the other side of the equation. Okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and add down, okay, like so. And we have 8x plus a negative 1x, so that will give me a positive 7x plus two, because it's going to be two plus nothing, or zero, equals, I just have a one right here, one plus zero, and then this goes away. And that's what I wanted. Okay, so now I'm left with this basic equation, 7x plus two equals one. And remember, I want to get the numbers all on the right-hand side of the equation, so I'm going to subtract this time a two from both sides of the equation. And let's go ahead and add down again. Now, of course, you don't have this fancy highlighter like I have, but conceptually, you should be doing this, okay? And your work should be, you know, you should be able to follow what your teacher's looking at. You know, you're kind of telling a story step by step uh, to get to the solution, okay? All right, so here, this is going to give us 7x is equal to 1 plus a negative 2 is negative 1. And then uh, how do we solve this equation here? Real basic equation. Hopefully, you're... Hopefully, you said, oh, okay, I know how to do, do this. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 7. So x is equal to negative 1 seventh, and that is our solution. Okay, so if you got that answer, um, excellent. And if you got this answer, but you didn't really, you know, if you kind of skipped steps and you kind of went fast and you still got that answer, you need to slow things down and increase uh, how, amount of work you're showing. There are some teachers like myself that if you, you know, if I gave you this problem and you only showed me like a one or two quick little steps and then you gave me that right answer, I would not, i probably deduct points, okay? And you would come to me and you'd be like, that's not fair because I want to see evidence of your understanding, okay? So when you focus on writing neat and structured step-by-step you're going to convince your teacher that you know exactly what you're doing, okay? And this is the way you're going to really comprehend um, all the concepts in mathematics over the long run. Okay, so hopefully this was a pretty easy problem. Now, if you got it right, by no means is um, this, you know, like, hey, you should just, you know, relax and you don't have a lot of other stuff to study in algebra. There's a huge amount of topics uh, to study, but... Um, if you got this, if you didn't get this right, then just use it as feedback and, you know, um, uh, hopefully there's time for you to prepare for this test. So let's go and wrap this up. Um, if you're new to my channel, been on YouTube for a good 12 years at the time of this video, and I already have um, a lot of material on my channel that can help you out, and I'm posting stuff all the time, so hopefully you'll consider subscribing. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. How do you, you know, like algebra? How do you like math? Okay. Generally speaking, I found that most students either kind of like math or they don't like math. But one thing is uh, certain, Algebra 1 is a critical course for you because in um, high school, everything is going to build off your understanding of Algebra 1. So it's really uniquely important. Okay. And um, again, you know, if you're struggling in math, my advice to students is, one, 
always maximize what your teacher is telling you, okay? Take advantage of everything from your teacher, okay? Um, all the materials, etc. But if you need something beyond that, then uh, a course like mine will serve you really well, okay? Super comprehensive. I think you'll be uh, truly impressed with it. So I'm going to leave a link to my Virginia SOL Algebra 1 uh, test prep course in the description of this video. You can check that out. And with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time. And I wish you all the best in mathematics. And have a great day.